That's incredible, sir. I always thought that Doc Holliday was the one that killed him. Incredible, sir. I always thought that Doc Holliday was the one that killed him. Sorry I had to ruin the legend for you, boy. But the legend ain't always true. Doc Holliday had nothing to do with the death of Johnny Ringo. I was paid a healthy bounty for Ringo and Curly Bill, and realized there was real money to be made. That's why I went after Henry Plummer. Now wasn't he the sheriff who augmented his income by shaking down miners and robbing gold shipments? That's the one. Oh yeah, I remember him. He ran that gang of thieving outlaws called the Innocents. So it's true that you went toe-to-toe -to -toe with him? Indeed I did, son. Indeed I did. I knew I needed resources if I was going to track down Roscoe Bob Bryant. And hunting plumber looked like a good way to get rich quick. As the local vigilantes exposed him as the leader of the bandits and put a generous price on his head. Plummer rallied his gang to plunder one last gold mine before making their escape. And that's where I thought I'd find him. so close to all these goddamn barrels of gunpowder. Why would you be nervous? No one has the cojones to come after us. As long as you don't light up a cigar, we're fine. Yeah, besides, George is up there on the rocks with that rifle of his. Nothing gets put in here. My late father pointed out to me more than once, God made men, but Samuel Colt made them equal. I knew that dynamite wasn't mine, so I decided the polite thing would be to return it. 
It was the biggest gold rush since Sutter's Mill in 48. Unfortunately, prospectors weren't the only ones drawn to those riches. There were thieves, killers, robbing travelers, and hijacking gold shipments. Like those that ran with plumbers. Some were just regular folks I knew from town, drawn by greed and easy pickings. Charlie Crow, the blacksmith. James, who worked in the stable. You can't beat the innocents! Sam and Jeremiah Barber, the butcher's son. <laughs> Ordinary citizens who lived a double life. Stealing and thieving and murdering his neighbors. Of course, the rest were veterans of the Civil War. Stone cold killers trained on the bloody fields of Shiloh and Antietam. Bummer had a lot of men on his payroll. That son of a bitch pretended to protect the public with one hand, while stealing them blind with the other. He set up a defensive perimeter which I had no idea how to breach. <laughs> Dangerous, desperate individuals. I was outnumbered and in way over my head. But I was too damn stubborn and stupid to realize. They must have thought I was tough. Or had some kind of death wish. Seeing as there were barrels of gunpowder everywhere. One stray bullet, one stray spark, and I'd be blown to hell and gone. Did I have any second thoughts about what I was doing? No. I thought I was some kind of hero. I finally made it past and headed on to meet my destiny. But first, I had something I needed to figure out. I had a few ideas on how to get into that mine, but once I made my decision, I knew there was no turning back. So my first thought was to enter the nearest mine portal. I saw an entrance. Made sense. It was the quickest way in, but that also made it more dangerous. As there would undoubtedly be enemy pickets posted along the way. You can't beat the innocents! Besides, once you enter a mine like that, it's easy to get all turned around. And that confusing maze of corridors wouldn't even be the worst of it. So 
Some of those shafts could be as deep as hell. <laughs> A single stumble or misstep can easily end in a deadly plunge to oblivion. often make up for a lack of common sense. Luckily, I was never one to be easily bushwhacked. I would just need to be careful not to blow myself to kingdom come. With all that gunpowder and dynamite everywhere, a body has to know what he's shooting at. One wrong bullet could have turned that mine into a dad blasted tomb. I freely admit that my plan of attack was not just moronic, but clearly in sight. It's a good thing that I abandoned that ridiculous plan before I even tried it. Instead, I spotted a ladder. A way into the mine from the opposite side. It was a long way around, but that approach seemed more sensible at the time. Of course, being I had a problem with heights, that scaffolding scared the bejesus out of me. Climbing down that ladder required some caution. Because even though I had a younger man's reflexes, no man can dodge a damn bullet while climbing down a rickety ladder. needed to make a leap of faith. I was determined not to give up, however. As Sheriff Plummer seemed quite the despicable character. 
When the vigilantes discovered what the sheriff was up to, people were outraged. That 10,000 they put on his head would go a long way to help me find old Bob. And I had made it my mission to settle that score come hell or high water. First, I would have to make a choice. Take the elevator, or climb the ladder. I wanted to use the element of surprise. Plus, I figured I could use the exercise. I was warmed up already, so what the hell? <laughs> Plummer was a mad dog killer, and the people of Nevada City deserved better. <laughs> both places one time or another, but that's neither here nor there. The point was, taking him down would save a lot of lives, including my own. was clearly unhinged, and I could see right away that this was going to take some doing. I can so cool! Run! Who said you could throw dynamite? You are not taking me! I need some help here! Come on, boys! Take this cocksucker out! Everything! 
today. <laughs> this cop suck is smarter than you.
that's how Henry Plummer died. Him and his crew were worth their weight in gold. And now, I was officially a bounty hunter. So, did you finally go after that Bob feller? Well, I heard word he was in Kansas with John Wesley Hardin. So that's where I went. Where in Kansas? Abilene. Why do you ask, Ben? No reason. Was Hardin as fast as Ringo? Ringo was fast, but John Wesley was as fast as the devil himself. Hell, he killed his first man at 15. From that day forward, he had a price on his head and wouldn't back down for nobody, not even Wild Bill Hickok himself. I dodged death many a time, and that night in Abilene was no different. <laughs> 